continue this particular topic so in yesterday's class we have seen about what is a class and what is an object so let's continue this particular topic so we have seen about what is a class and what is an object and i told you about a methods right with the help of a methods uh, it's a simple one time creation and a multiple times a usage concept for which we are going for methods why we are going for a method means in order to duplicate okay see the thing is if i am writing a program so there is a possibility for me to write a same code for n number of times to avoid that we are going for methods and we are accessing the content present in a method for suppose assume that my class name is ramya okay my class name is ramya and it is having an information in that like okay it's having an information in that like assume that login is the one method and logout is another method in this class fine so i have created a method in class priya i would like to use login and a logout call login from class ramya if i convey like that how would my script can understand that <clears throat> my login is from such a test case okay so here the point is uh, we need to be more specific whenever we are uh, specifying the class name okay so here it means uh, in order to access see the point is uh, in order to access the methods present in one class into another class means we need to create an object to the class which is having methods right now which class is having a methods as of now ramya class is having a methods so create an object to ramya where we are using in a priya sa class so in the priya class i need to create an object to ramya class okay in the priya class i need to create an object to my ramya's class so how can i create an object class name space object name is equal to new class name this is a syntax okay class name space object name is equal to new class name is the syntax of which we need to follow in order to create an object in order to create an object this is the syntax which we need to follow guys okay in order to uh, create this is the syntax which we need to follow that's fine my class ramya contains the information ramya space obj name is equal to new my class name is ramya i have created an object now so with this object which is obj name we can access either the methods are present in the class or else the variables are defined in that particular class obj name dot will list down all the information from parent class okay that's a simple point so the conclusion point is in order to access the information present in class 1 which is a ramya i can specify obj name dot automatically i can access the information that's fine so let's see this concept practically so i'm going back to my eclipse editor and even i am just going back to my jyoti projects where in which right click on a w1 package go for new and select a class see i am just specifying my name as a rc1 i am not selecting anything i just clicked on a finish okay i just clicked on a finish button on my class name whenever we have a finished the class see here a new class public class rc1 so it got a created that's fine so within this particular class and now let's try to run this class so right click 
run as it's not a displaying as a java application so it means it is not allowing me an option to run this class as a java class now what i am doing means create a another class with a name as a rc2 prior that check this checkbox the checkbox of which i would like to check over here is okay the checkbox of which i would like to check over here is this is the one this is the checkbox which i would like to check so check the checkbox and click on a finish i just clicked on a finish see a new class got created now right click run as see here as of now it is being displaying as a java option then what is the difference between these two then right what is the difference between these two then so the basic difference between these two is the rc1 class doesn't have any main method whereas rc2 class will have a main methods that is the thing so whenever we are writing a programs and whenever we are executing the programs we need to cross check that that must have a main method okay we need to cross check that it must have a main method okay it must have a main method then only we can run that particular class if a class is having a main method then only we can run that so just forgot about the public static void main string of arguments just forgot about the syntax which we will be discussing probably in our tomorrow's class what exactly the syntax is fine in my rc class now i am creating a method public void login methods guys if you remember the selenium ide in order to print a message to the log or else to the console we used echo command right and in order to comment a single line we are using these two slashes if i would like to comment a multiple lines i usually use this syntax okay what are all the lines that we have a specified over here it will be commented so immediately a simple question will rise in our mind why we need to comment our test script the simple reason is for readability if a person who don't have any idea about automation also by looking into these comments he can understand that for what this script is the design and all those things he can understand that now what i am doing means in selenium ide we used a echo command to print a message right we used a echo command to print a message whereas in rc we are using system dot out dot print ln and the keyboard shortcut key is enter as y as v then press control plus space see here i have entered as far as for now i am pressing control plus space the entire line got captured system dot out dot print ln line got generated and now log into app message i have added so when i run this script automatically this message will be returned to the console okay when i run this particular script this method will be returned to the console and now public void logout this time system dot out dot print ln logout from app i just defined this one guys am i clear for everybody simply i have a created a two methods one is for login and the other one is for logout okay i just created a couple of methods one is for login and another one is for logout am i clear for everybody so how to create a methods fine cool guy 3 mukesh <coughs> vidya okay cool done so once we are done up to here once after i have created a methods in my class two i would like to call those methods so create an object obj name 
is equal to new RC1. RC1 is the class of which is having all these methods. Hence, I have created an object to my RC1 class itself. So, RC1 space OBJ name is equal to new RC1. Now, when I type it as a OBJ name dot, see too much of information is displaying at the end. For every information, it is treating it as an object, object, object. Whereas for login and a logout, it is treating it as a RC1. So it means these two methods are from the RC1 class, whatever you have created. Every line will be ended with a semicolon. Hence, I just added as a semicolon over there. And obj name dot. Here we have a logout. Click on that and with a semicolon. I just created that and I called this one. Simply what we did over here, whatever the information present in a one class, I just called this information in an another class. Now, right click run as a java application i'm just executing this class now see here log into app and log out from app whatever the messages we have defined over there that particular messages got returned to the console okay whatever the messages we have returned over there that particular message is got returned to the console that's fine am i clear for everybody how to create a method and how to call that particular method for suppose okay to this login here i'm specifying as you name as kavya password as test one see it means whenever i call this method Within the method, I have a define a logic in such a way that enter the value kavya in the username field, enter the password as a test1 in the password field. That's what we have a defined over here, right? That's what we have a defined over here. So, whenever I am calling my test script and whenever I am executing my test scripts, always my script will work on Kavya and the test one credentials itself. Let me re-execute this script once. It's been executing on a Kavya and the test one. If I call this script for 10 times, again these are 10 times it will be running on Kavya and as well as the test one. Okay, always it's gonna execute on a Kavya and as well as the test one set itself. So my intention is I don't want to execute my test script always on a caveat set of credentials. That's completely up to my wish. I need to specify my own user ID. Then only it needs to execute the specified user ID. See how I am going to do now means public void login to app. I'm defining a method now. The name is a login to app where in which we are passing a parameter as a string username, string password. So what it will happen? String uname and a string password. What exactly it will happen means my test script. Wherever I am calling this method, I am passing my own credentials so i need to write a logic in this method in such a way that it needs to enter this a uname and a password so system dot out dot print ln uname is plus uname plus uname why i have a given as a plus uname See, the simple point is, this is a string, okay, this is a string. From this string, just a plus, I am adding the value present in a uname variable. So, why I have a given a plus over here, a string along with 
the value present in a variable I have a specified. The same way here also system dot out dot print ln password is p a s s password is plus p s w d okay password is a plus p s w d is the one which we have a specified that's fine automatically my script got executed so it means login to app is the method name so in my class just call this method obj name dot login to app whereas whenever we are calling a method which is having a parameters at the time of a calling we need to pass those parameters like test one two three four is my password and my user id is mukesh Mukesh is my user ID. I just specified that. When I run my script right now, see here, it will enter on the Mukesh user ID and a password as a test one two three four. If I change my user ID and a password to Mukesh one two three four, and when I run my script, automatically it will be running on that one. Whatever the credential set we have a specified. on those credentials only my script will execute okay so here the one whatever we are defining we can call it as a parameters why we are defining parameters to any method the simple reason is at the time of a calling we can specify our own credentials set okay whatever the one which i would like to run i would like to specify my credential set not only for this one any kind of a method we can specify our own credentials okay we can specify our own credentials so that's the reason we are just using this particular method okay am i clear for everybody or do you people have any questions for me till now so in here i am just making a conclusion point if a method contains a parameters then while calling those method we need to pass those parameters that's the simple thing while calling that method we need to pass the parameters that's the only thing guys am i clear for everybody or do people have any questions for me is this point clear for you all mukesh uh, vidya vidya sadish uh, and uh, remaining people gayatri jyoti cool done up to here once we are done that's fine so what additionally i am doing means see so far we have a created yes you people need to do practice on this one and a small request means a small request from my end is a kindly practice the concepts whatever we are discussing on a daily basis or else after completion of a class just spend 10 minutes uh, just have a look into the videos okay that would be easy for you people to follow these concepts okay fine so what additionally i am doing means i am creating another new package or else right click on src go to new class see here i can specify a package name as a w2 here so that's completely up to your wish you can specify a package name from here or else you can create a package and you can use that see here i am creating a new package with a name as a w2 and the script is rc11 click on a finish see here w2 package got a created to which rc11 script got a created so it means right click so it means whenever we are creating a test scripts we no need to specify or else we no need to create that test script on that package directly by right clicking on src go to the class you can either specify your package name like this if you would like to create a new package even we can specify that one too 
automatically your eclipse reader will create that particular package or else it will add the class to that particular package it will add the class to that particular package that's fine so here i am defining another method public void create a user and generally guys in order to create a user we need to fill the form right so i need to specify the parameters like string username string password string first name string last name that's the only thing which i need to specify guys okay this is the parameter which i would like to pass over here i just pass in my parameters over here that's fine okay that's fine i just specified these parameters now system dot out dot print ln username directly i'm just printing these commands okay whatever the uh, set we have uh, entered i'm just printing them username password first name last name i just uh, specified these four so what it will happen what are all the parameters uh, we have uh, entered right now it is a uh, printing those uh, parameters directly we are giving this a string itself we are not adding any uh, prior string to that okay that's the reason i am not adding plus before that the reason is directly i am printing the value present in a variable now in the w1 package i am creating a new class with a name as a rc3 where in which i am creating an object to rc11 i'm just creating an object to an rc11 see right now whenever i have created an object to my rc11 okay whenever i have created an object to my rc11 see it's been throwing an error message and whenever i place it my cursor on that a tooltip message it is displaying that import rc1 class from w2 package see the simple thing is you are trying to access a class which is defined in another package if you would like to use that you need to import that just click on a import whenever you click on a import on the top of your test script after the package a new command got generated which is import w2 dot rc11 the meaning is w2 is a package name dot a class name so here we are importing that so when this import comes into your picture whenever we are trying to access the class information which is not there in this class if you would like to access the information present in a another class present in a another package in those cases we need to import that the class to the current package or else the current class let me make a statement of this one so this is the important point i'm just adding over here so here the another point is whenever we are calling a method from a different class present in different package in those a cases okay in those a cases what we need to do we need to import the class to the current class we need to import the class to the current class okay we need to import the class to the current class then only we can then only we can access that particular class okay that's fine am i clear for everybody or do you people have any specific questions for me guys am i clear for everyone cool done fine once we are done up to here 
the next point what exactly I need to do then I just uh, specified all these uh, stuff now uh, I would like to show you a small example okay that's fine I just uh, created all these uh, classes now what I am trying to do means uh, just give me a second guys I'm gonna open a small running notes here so uh, so right now I would like to explain you about a constructor concept okay so what is a constructor why we are going for the constructor what is the significance of a constructor okay we need to know about what is a constructor why we are going for the constructor and what is the significance of this particular constructor see here if you observe the running notes the definition over here is constructor is a code a block of a code which is called and executed at the time of object creation the most important point what exactly we need to know about the constructor is constructor is a called at the time of object creation constructor is a piece of code itself so it's also a code itself but it is a called whenever we are creating an object to a class okay for suppose let me show you a small example over here and before going to the example let's see some kind of a rules for this constructor the name of the constructor and the class name should be one and the same okay so whatever the class name and the constructor name should be one and the same assume that I have a created a class with a name as a Ramya my constructor name should be the same as the class name okay my class name and as well as a constructor name both are one and the same okay my class name and as well as my constructor name both are one and the same that's the first rule okay and another second rule basically okay another second rule basically for this a constructor is this a constructors is similar to that of a method or it seems like a method only the constructor and a method both seems like one and the same then what is the difference see we have a seen what is a constructor but we haven't seen why we need to use these constructors which I will be explaining further but prayer that what is the difference between a method and a constructor so let me explain you this one for suppose my method is public void sum int a int b and int c is equal to a plus b then so what is the logic we have written in this particular method please if you clearly observe we are just adding these two numbers and we are storing the result in a C variable which is of an integer type so whenever we are calling this method we can call like int a comma int b we can pass it and we can print that information let me create a method for that so here rc4 I am creating a class where in which I am returning as a public void sum int a int b and int a int b and int c is equal to a plus b I have a created a method the ultimate objective of this method is to add the two numbers I am creating a new class rc5 and call the method so which is rc4 space obj name is equal to new rc4 rc4 dot 
or else obj name dot sum method i pass it a 2 and a 3 let's run this class right click run as a java application see i just executed this class but it returned nothing our intention is whenever it is returning or else it is adding two numbers means at least it needs to return the sum of two numbers in order to return the sum of two numbers we need to add a return statement as a c i would like to return c in those cases here it was not supposed to be void whatever the return type c is of an integer type so the return type is an integer so the return type is an integer so i'm just asking it to return the integer so here whenever i am calling this method i am storing it in a int x is equal to system dot out dot print ln x see if you clearly observe what i return guys I am returning C. What is a C? C is of an integer type which is containing the sum of two numbers. When I call these methods, the sum will be stored in a C. It is returning a value as a C. That's the reason. Whatever this value is returning, I am storing it in a X variable and I am printing that. Right now, when I call these method or else when I run this method, it is returning the sum of two numbers. See here, I'm just giving a 5, 3 and now run the script. It is returning the sum between the two numbers. So the conclusion point is our method must contain a return statement. Okay, our method must contain a return statement. Then only whatever the statement we are, we would like to return, it will be printed to the console. That's fine. So here, this is a return statement. For a method, there must be a return or else I can specify a void. It means the method is not returning anything. Okay, the method is not returning anything. So generally, whenever we are creating any method means for that particular method, it must contain a return type either a void or anything like a integer or a string or a boolean whatever it might be it must contain a return type for a method whenever we are creating a method a thumb rule is we need to specify the return type for a method whereas moving on to a constructor a constructor doesn't contain any return type the basic difference is a method contains a return type and a constructor doesn't contain any return type. A method contains a return type, a constructor doesn't contain any return type. That's fine. That's fine. Am I clear for you all so far? What is the basic difference between a method and as well as a constructor, guys? Vidya, Mukesh, Jyoti, Gayatri. Am I clear for you all? Cool. So that's the basic difference between these two. Then, why we are creating a constructor? What is the use of creating the constructor? Is in order to pass values to the variables okay in order to pass the values to the variables okay at the time of object creation itself the only reason why we are going for the constructor is at the time of object creation itself it will pass the values so if there are five variables that defined in your class okay if we would like to pass all those values at the time of creation itself object creation in those cases, we can go for this a constructor. So, let me create a class first and show you an example. RC6 is my class name to which it is a having a constructor as a U name. Sorry, string as a U name, string as a password. Now, I would like to create a constructor. 
So here, public RC6 is my constructor name. The reason is the class name and the constructor name are one and the same. String U name, string password. See, I have a defined a constructor to which I just pass in my parameters. See, there is a no difference between a creation of a constructor and a method. The only difference over here is it doesn't have any return types. See here, constructor doesn't have any return types. And name as class name only. Whatever the name we would like to define, that name should be as a class name itself. I have a created a constructor which we can call it as a parameterized constructor. Now, I am creating a new class with a name as a RC7. I would like to create the object of a RC6 space OBJ name is equal to new RC6. I created an object. But on the right hand side, it is a throwing an error message stating that as you know that constructor will be called at the time of object creation. For the RC6 class, you have a parameterized constructor which contains a couple of values. So here you need to pass those parameters. Ramya. Kavya is my credentials and here what I am doing means constructor verification okay now run our test script just run our test script see here I have a created an object to my constructor but whatever the code I have a defined in the constructor was called by my Java so the conclusion point is Whenever a class contains a constructor, while creating an object to that particular class, if there are multiple parameters defined to the constructor, this one we can call it as a parameterized constructor. Parameterized constructor. Okay, we can call it as a parameterized constructor. If your class contains a parameterized constructor, then automatically this parameterized constructor will be called public RC6. See, for any class by default, a default constructor is there. Okay, wherever we have a created a class internally, for a class, a default constructor will be there. Okay, so for a class by default, a default constructor will be there. Okay, that's fine. So here we are just creating this particular object. But if you would like to specify the information present by a parameterized constructor, then we need to define in such a way, guys. So define a parameterized constructor and define the desired logic. And if at all any values are there for that constructor, we need to pass those values while calling that constructor. Am I clear for everybody so far how to create a constructor? That's a simple point. And one more point, thumb rule, what we need to remember is whenever we have a created a class, internally that class contains a default constructor which is not a visible for us. By default, a Java class will create a default constructor which is not a visible for us. That's fine. Am I clear for everybody so far or do you people have any questions for me? Gayatri, Jyoti, Vidya, Vidya. Mukesh, cool. And now guys, so here I have a created a constructor by writing a own syntax, right? So I'm creating a new class with a name as a RC8. Here I'm defining string first name, string last name. I have a defined a two variables. In order to create a constructor, right click, go to source, generate a constructors using a fields option is there. See here, generate a constructors using a fields option is there. Click on that. 
what are all the fields are there all these fields are got are displayed so i am asking it to generate a constructor using a first name by default it will select all the fields but i would like to generate a constructor using a first name and click on a finish automatically a new constructor got created by my java class but it is uh, having a super keyboard and uh, this keyboard which we will be explaining in our further class guys okay which we will be discussing in our further class that's fine but up to here we have a scene about uh, what is a constructor and how to create a constructor and if a class uh, contains a constructor how to create an object to that particular class all this information we have a scene up to here am i clear for you all till now or do you people have any questions for me fine guys Now we are gonna work on Selenium ID. You are gonna send. You are sending this recording session to practice. Of course, I'm just uploading this recording in a YouTube, guys. Okay. So instead of sharing these recordings in a Google Drive, I'm just uploading all the recordings in a YouTube, and I'm gonna.